Hello everyone, we're going to talk about tides now. You want to make sure that you write down anything that's bolded and underlined, and you can pause the video at any time in order to do so. Okay, so we're going to start off by defining what tides actually are. Tides are the rise and fall of water. They rise for about six hours and then fall for about six hours, and they do this throughout the day in the cycle. Right, what causes tides? The Earth and the Moon are pulled towards each other due to the force of gravity. We've already talked about this. And tides occur because the Moon does not pull with the same force on all parts of the Earth. It makes sense depending on where the Moon is positioned, what phase it's in. It's going to pull on different parts of the Earth at different times. There are two high tides at any one time. One at the point on Earth closest to the Moon and one on the opposite side. Right? So the point closest to the moon is going to have a high tide, and the point on the opposite side is also going to have one, and we'll see why. All right, so point A is the obvious one. Right? It's closest to the moon. The moon's gravitational force is going to be strongest here. Right? So water here is pulled more strongly towards the moon than the earth. That's why we get a high tide here. You get a swell of water being pulled towards the moon. That doesn't explain why we also get a high tide on the other side, near B. So let's find out why. Point B, the moon's gravitational force on the Earth as a whole is stronger than its force on the water, which means it's pulling the Earth this way while the water is kind of left behind on the other side. Right, so the Earth is pulled more strongly towards the Moon, and the water stays where it is due to inertia. That's why you end up getting a high tide. Right, so point A and point B, we see a high tide. This is just another good diagram. You get a bulge of water closest to the Moon and a bulge on the other side. Water is left behind doesn't want to move, right, due to inertia, doesn't want to change, the Earth is being pulled away from it. All right, points C and D experience low tide. Water flows away from these locations towards points A and B. So you end up getting a low tide here, a low tide here. And notice these are both at right angles to the moon, right, as opposed to directly in line with the moon. All right, the tide cycle. There are two high tides and two low tides every 25 hours, so about a, a day time cycle. And this is because of the Earth's rotation. All right, so let's say the moon is over here. As the Earth rotates, one location is going to be experiencing first high, low, high, low, high again in a 25 hour period it experiences this. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about something called a spring tide and a neap tide. All right, it's not just the moon that's involved in tides. The sun also plays a little bit of a role. So the sun's gravity also pulls on Earth's waters. It's the sun's further away, so it doesn't have as much of an impact as the moon, but it does have some. So sometimes the sun's and moon's gravity work together, and that's when we end up getting a spring tide. Sometimes they pull on the water at right angles, and that's when we get a neap tide. All right, so this would be an example of a spring tide. The sun, the moon, they're all in line, and they're helping create an even higher high tide. Versus when you have, let's say, a quarter moon, the sun and the moon are no longer working together. They're kind of working against each other. That's when you're going to get a neap tide. All right, so spring and neap tides both happen twice a month. All right, so again, this is just, this would be the spring tide, right? When you have a new moon or you have a full moon, everything's in line. It's going to be creating extra high tides because now the sun is involved in pulling these tides out as well as the moon. Versus here, you've got the sun kind of working to counter the moon, right? The moon is pulling the high tides here. The sun is doing a little bit of pulling in the 
the middle here. So the tides are not going to be as extreme during a neap tide as they would be during a spring tide. All right, another good example here, spring tide, gravitational force working together, moon and sun creating extra high tides and extra low tides over here. All right, this only occurs during a full or a new moon. So the moon would either be here or would be over here. These are the highest high tides and the lowest low tides. And so that creates the biggest tidal range or the biggest difference between the high and the low tide at this time. All right, neap tides. They happen during the first and last quarter moons. So when the moon's over here or when it's over here. High tides are not very high and low tides are not very low. And this is again because the sun is kind of working to counter the moon here. They're working against each other. You get the smallest tidal range during this time. All right, spring and neap tides, they occur kind of alternating, right? So in the first week of the moon cycle, you'll get a spring tide, the new moon. Then when you get to the first quarter, you'll get a neap, a neap tide. Then when you hit the full moon, another spring tide, third quarter moon, neap tide. And then when you get back to a new moon, you hit another spring tide. So they alternate throughout the moon cycle. And this just shows kind of the difference in range, right? During a spring tide, a high tide might reach this point, the low tide much lower. During a neap tide, the low tide's going to move up a little bit. The high tide's going to move down a little bit. So there's a much smaller range during a neap than there is during a spring. All right, make sure you got all of those notes. Um, go back and review if you missed anything, and have a great night.